For five days, representatives of 94 states, 113 organizations, and many hundreds of individuals, lawyers, social workers, prosecutors, judges, psychologists, educators, police personnel, and a multitude of other disciplines from every corner of the world gathered with one purpose in mind. The World Congress on Juvenile Justice has been decided to bring together states and actors of the civil society to exchange on and to promote the international standards and implement the children's rights in the field of juvenile justice in the perspective of juvenile restorative justice. This World Congress on Juvenile Justice was the result of a joint effort by the Federal Department of Foreign Affairs of Switzerland, the Federal Office of Justice and Terre des Hommes Foundation. 100 experts intervened in different sessions and more than 32 workshops were held. All of them had the same protagonist, the child, a human being under 18 years old who, although may look like an adult, is still a child, learning, developing, growing, not only physically but also psychologically, cognitively and emotionally, sometimes surviving in harsh conditions, sometimes suffering, being abused or neglected, not educated enough. He or she might have entered in conflict with the law, but as children, they deserve a second chance. As children, their rights have to be respected. Olha, eu fui espancado aqui, ó. Aí eu levei uma palada aqui, ó, uma fatura exposta, ó. O policial me bateu. Aí ainda disse que eu tava com o chuchu pra ir pra cima dele. Botaram o chuchu pra cima de mim. Até hoje não aconteceu nadinha. Me deu uma paulada aí, ó. Peguei fatura exposta. Aí ele chega aqui e faz o que quer com o cara, o diretor não fala nadinha. Just imagine for one second, the next time you come to a congress like this, imagine for one second your own child commits a crime. Your own child finds itself in the system of the juvenile justice. The child may have smoked a joint, may have robbed a phone like we just saw here, it just finds itself in the system. Wouldn't you want, at this time, your child, your own flesh, you can empathize with this child, wouldn't you want this child to be treated without discrimination? Wouldn't you want your child to be treated with dignity, the whole process to be done in its own interest? It's, at the end of the day, your interest, it's your child. Wouldn't you want the child to have the right to live, the right to personal development, to survive? This is empathy. The last couple of decades have seen a rise in awareness about the need for the specialization of juvenile justice. International standards are in place. Declarations and conventions have been signed that promote a justice system adapted to children, a system where their best interest is pursued and guaranteed. It is the state's duty to implement these standards. Moi, je leur conseillerais ce que je leur conseille dans d'autres domaines aussi, c'est que quand ils signent euh, un accord, une convention, un engagement, eh bien, il faut qu'ils l'appliquent, parce que sinon, ça sert à rien quelque part. Parce que toute convention ou tout engagement d'un État doit avoir des suites sensibles que l'on peut mesurer quelque part dans la vie de chacun d'entre nous. Et euh, c'est ça que je leur demande, dans ce domaine comme dans d'autres. Quand on s'engage, il faut le faire sentir pour le bien, pour le progrès auprès des gens. The task, however, is not simple. The challenges faced by states, society and children in particular are neither few nor easy to overcome. Poverty, lack of education, the vicious circle of violence, all these ideas were well conveyed by the photographer Olivio Argenti in his photography exhibition Atrapados, which asks many questions. Where is the state? Why is society considering these young people as garbage uh, when they are simply trying to break away from a violence which probably was a violence of their own parents suffered themselves. It's a vicious circle of, of, of violence and, and, and criminality. The repressive mentality has also become a major challenge. Tener un niño con harapos es un es culpa de la pobreza. Tenerlo disfrazado de preso adulto es culpa de la mentalidad represiva. 
we have to invert the thinking around juvenile justice. We have to protect society. We have to create a secure society. But at the same time, we have to make children feel that they're part of that society and make them part of protecting that society. And then perhaps the offending will go down. Um, the more we make it punitive, the more we make detention uh, the, the first resort. What we are going to have is what we have today increasing violence, increasing violence by children, against children, because violence against children makes them violent when they grow up. A third challenge comes from the hardline response, popular among politicians facing a public opinion ever more alarmed by increasing levels of insecurity. The message to the general public during the World Congress was clear. Ne vous arrêtez pas aux clichés. Ne pensez pas parce qu'un enfant a commis un crime qu'il est perdu pour la société. Ne pensez pas que la criminalité juvénile est en augmentation partout. Pensez d'abord, cet enfant appartient à une communauté. Comment pouvez-vous faire pour qu'il y revienne et pour qu'il en devienne un membre à part entière pour son futur d'adulte? Despite these challenges, the World Congress on Juvenile Justice showed that there are some positive experiences around the world where children are increasingly being diverted from the criminal justice system through alternative measures, where sentencing happens outside detention centers with an educative perspective. And if children are detained, this is a measure of last resort and for the minimum period of time, where children are protected, they are allowed to keep in touch with their families, they are educated and rehabilitated. There are some positive experiences, where children are given the opportunity to take responsibility for what they have done, First, by becoming aware of the damage they have inflicted to others, and second, by restoring the victim through a restorative process. There are positive experiences where children are given the opportunity to be reintegrated into society as positive human beings. There is a long way to go until this type of child rights-based juvenile justice becomes the norm in every corner of the world. But the good news is that we know how to get there. Participants in the World Congress stressed some mechanisms that can help make this transformation possible. Restorative justice was widely discussed as an approach that has worked in many parts of the world, based on five principles, values, relationships, responsibility, addressing harm, and strengthening community. It gives the possibility for reintegration and community victim healing. It's a transformational process for the whole society it becomes a moment of transformation. When you become aware of what you did, the consequences, the responsibility you have towards the other, and how that has affected the other person's life and your life and the people around you. It is, uh, it is truly transformational in that sense. In Caixas do Sol, Brazil, for example, restorative justice has been applied in a number of cases with noticeable effects in terms of pacification. Para las partes involucradas eso tiene un impacto muy movilizador. Eh, a la vez siguen eh, se proponiendo a hacer el, ellos propios eh, contribuciones en pacificación, eh, crean sus propios programas eh, familiares o escolares, se tornan voluntarios para hacer cosas por la pacificación. Es todo muy entusiasmante. A good example of the integration of the restorative approach into the juvenile justice system comes from countries where elements of customary law have been incorporated into the system and where the justice process is provided by the communities themselves in respect of children's rights. The case of New Zealand was shared during the Congress. The Rangatahi courts themselves, the, es the essence of them is that they incorporate indigenous culture and indigenous language and indigenous protocols into the process of the court, but it's still a formal court system that's involved. The um, response from the Māori communities throughout the country has been overwhelming, so that the community can take ownership, can have some participation and input into dealing with their young people who are getting into trouble and who are vulnerable and at risk. Specialization and training of justice professionals was another key point stressed by participants in the Congress. It is the fact that we need training. We need to provide training to the magistrates, to the judges, for them to appreciate that the children who appear before them are, were, were not born as criminals. Those children who are offending children in front of them are just like their own children. And at one time, they were innocent. They have become deviant in their behavior. They have adopted 
wrong ways because of their circumstances. A specialised juvenile police, for example, has shown good results in New Zealand. The New, the, why it works in New Zealand is we have specialist juvenile police, they're known as youth aid officers. And any child who, who comes into conflict with the law, the matter is referred to them. They don't attend the incident. As a result of that specialisation and well training, good assessments are made, very high levels of diversion. The final aim of juvenile justice is to promote the child's rehabilitation and reintegration into society. In this regard, education was mentioned as playing a key role that should be an essential component and goal of any measures directed at children in conflict with the law anywhere in the world. Today, for example, we heard three of the speakers from different parts of the world talk about the power of education, education being the key to rehabilitation, if you will, giving kids an opportunity to learn from their mistakes. And this is crucial because it affirms what we're trying to do in New York, for example. States are the first responsible for applying international standards and implementing a juvenile justice system adapted to children. They have to provide resources and promote a justice that respects children's rights. Many of them have done so. Others are taking steps in this direction. During the Congress, representatives of states from all continents shared their experiences, from Senegal to Nicaragua, from the Netherlands to New Zealand, from the UAE to China. But they're not alone in this task. It became clear during the Congress that this effort also needs a genuine participation from the civil society. Both states and civil society need to work together. El gran reto o desafío de estos congresos es lo que se viene después. Eh, como bien es sabido, va a salir una declaración de este congreso con recomendaciones. Ahora es cómo las ponemos en marcha en los distintos países donde incluso la Fundación Tierra de Hombres trabaja. Nosotros, como sociedad civil, tenemos un papel muy importante para hacerle seguimiento al Estado, acompañamiento al Estado para poner en marcha eh, estas recomendaciones, sugerencias que pueden salir eh, de las conclusiones, de la declaración de, de este Congreso. National and international NGOs, United Nations agencies and many others have already contributed with innovations and good practices in the promotion of a child rights-based juvenile justice. They also shared their experiences during the Congress. Some, for example, work in the prevention of child torture at the early stages of investigation. For example, in China, uh, we have worked in a number of provinces uh, in collaboration with the justice officials to see how we could have access to a child at the stage of investigation by the police. And this has changed uh, the perception and the actual number of arrest warrants against children have dramatically reduced, especially like in Chongqing, uh, it has become the lowest in the country, arrest warrants against children, it's 40%. Um, and this has been uh, from earlier 70% to 40%. Other NGOs work with particular groups of children, like street and working children in India, to empower them and to give them a voice through participation. This is one thing which we are very proud of, is a newspaper. This is world's first of its kind newspaper for and by street and working children called Balaknama in Hindi. In English it means uh, voice of children. And this unique newspaper uh, basically gives children a chance to share their views and concerns to the larger community. The World Congress on Juvenile Justice brought a host of realities and possibilities to light. It served as a forum for dialogue where good practices were exchanged as never before and where experts and participants in general were able to learn from each other. What the Congress has reminded us is that no justice system, whether formal or informal, whether from continental or common law, is incompatible with children's rights and the principles of restorative justice. In fact, child rights-based justice system should not be seen by states as imposing constraints or limitations but rather as the solution to bring development, peace and growth into their societies. Children's rights are inspirational.